Let us see about the silicon control rectifier, its modes of operation and VI characteristics. So let us see about the thyristor family. So the first device is the silicon control rectifier. It has three terminals, anode, cathode and gate. So when the device is forward biased, you can apply gate signal to make it to conduct. But you cannot control the turn off process. The next device is a good turn off thyristor. So in which you can apply the gate pulse to turn off also. So if you apply a gate pulse, it will turn on. When you apply another gate pulse, you can turn off the device. The third device is the triac. It is also called a bidirectional thyristor because it um, is actually two thyristors connected in anti-parallel direction. So this device can conduct uh, current in both the directions. It can flow from A1 to A2 and it can all, uh, make the current to flow from A2 to A1. So this is basically two thyristors in um, opposite directions. So in this video, we will see only about the silicon control rectifier. So as the name suggests, this silicon control rectifier, it is made up of silicon and it is called control rectifier because if it is used as a rectifier, its operation can be easily controlled. So it is called a control rectifier. So how do you control its operation? By using this gate pulse. So this gate pulse can be used to determine when to turn on the device. So thereby you are controlling the operation of the rectifier. So it is called a silicon control rectifier. So if you see here, it has three terminals, anode, cathode and gate. This is the constructional view. So PN, PN, like uh, it is like two diodes connected together. PN, here one PN. So it has three junction J1, J2 and J3. In this center P, gate terminal will be connected. So it is a unidirectional device, meaning that it can conduct current only from anode to cathode. And it is called a semi-control device because using gate pulse, you can turn on the device, but you cannot turn off the device. So turn off will be determined by the external circuit in which it is connected. It is called charge control device because depending upon the current you inject here, amount of current you inject here, the device will start conduction. So it is called charge control device. So let us see the ideal VA characteristics of the SCR. So consider this circuit. Now when the SCR is forward biased, and there is no gate signal, you can block the forward voltage. But when a gate signal is given, it will start to conduct the current. So you will get this characteristics. And the reverse characteristics is similar to that of a diode. So when you apply the reverse voltage, it will block the reverse voltage. So this is the VI characteristics of a ideal SCM. So we can see that it, it is able to block both the polarity voltages. So it is called a bipolar device. Next is the modes of operation of SCR. There are three modes of um, operation. First one is the forward blocking mode. That is the device is forward biased but there is no gate signal. Next one is forward conduction mode. Device is uh, forward biased, but you are applying the gate. Next is reverse blocking mode where the device is reverse biased and there is no gate signal. 
let us see the forward blocking mode so in this mode so this is the ser so anode is connected to the positive terminal and cathode is connected to the negative terminal and gate circuit is open so in this mode ser is forward biased but there is no gate signal so it will not conduct only a small leakage current will flow and this acts as a open switch so next case forward conduction mode in this anode is positive with respect to cathode that is the device is forward biased and you are applying gate signal to the gate terminal so in this case current will flow from anode to cathode and this acts as a closed switch the third one is the reverse blocking mode here anode is device is reverse biased that is anode is negative with respect to cathode and gate circuit is open so here you can say that two diodes p and pn they are connected in series but a reverse voltage is connected across it so the reverse blocking mode is represented by the red line here this is similar to that of a diode when you apply the reverse voltage a small reverse leakage current will flow and once it reaches the breakdown voltage a sharp rise in current will be there so this is the reverse blocking mode the forward blocking mode is represented by this blue line so in this mode and the ser will be forward biased but there is no gate so you can find here ig is equal to 0 meaning there is no gate signal and there is a forward leakage current so the forward leakage current will be uh, flowing till the breakdown voltage once breakdown voltage is exceeded the device will turn on actually the device gets breakdown and it will get damaged so this should be avoided you should not exceed the breakdown voltage instead you can apply the gate signal and turn turn on on the device so gate signal magnitude um, you can vary so if it is higher the device will get turned on immediately so you see here ig1 is the greatest current so if you apply more get current it will turn on quickly if you apply a lesser current it will take some more time to get turned on okay so in this uh, characteristics two parameters are very important that is the latching current and holding current these two are so important that it appears in all the question papers you can check uh, in each and every question paper uh, any question related to uh, these two currents will be there so let us see what is a latching current as the name uh, indicates latch means you are getting locked into something so ser once turned on it can remain in on condition even if you remove the gate pulse that is called ser in latch state so once it enters into on condition even if you remove the gate pulse it will be in on condition so this latching current is this minimum current so if your anode current exceed this minimum current you can remove the gate pulse so that the device will be in on state the next one is the holding current so to turn off the ser you have to bring this anode current below this holding current so that the device will get turned off so two things are there latching current means above which you have to maintain so that device will be on holding current means 
below which you have to bring your current so that device will get turned off so latching current is associated with turn on process holding current with turn off process and always holding current will be less than the latching current so points to remember here are scr it is a three terminal four layer device it is a charge control device semi control device unidirectional device and bipolar device latching current is associated with turn on process holding current is associated with turn off process holding current is always less than latching current and latching current is generally 2 to 3 times greater than holding current so these are some of the questions that may appear for interview or competitive exam and if you want the answers you can find the link in description and if you like the video please do subscribe to our read electric vehicle channel thank you